This tutorial is entitled Parent Functions, and it's going to talk about three of the more common functions you'll see in a high school mathematics classroom, specifically the, the grade 11 functions one that I'm teaching. Uh, of course, if you're taking different courses from especially other provinces or countries, you'll probably encounter some different ones, but you'll probably see some of these as well. So a parent function is the most basic version of any class or type of function. And so this one on the left here is called the linear function. And the most basic version is f of x equals x or y equals x. Remember, y and f of x are the same thing. And we're talking about domain and range too. The domain and range are the values the function is defined for or the uh, value, the, the, um, uh, the function values the dependent variable can accept as well. So for example, uh, if you look at this function f of x equals x, uh, I can put any value of 1 in place of x uh, because it's, uh, it's just the y equals x function. So the domain is the entire set of real numbers. And the way we write that is x is contained in the set of real numbers. That's what the funny r looks like. Graphically as well, you see the graph exists above, above any of these x values. It doesn't matter how far I go. If I want to go to 100, I'm going to see the graph up there somewhere. And the same to the left. If I want to go to like negative, you know, 1,000.2, then the graph's going to be way down here somewhere. So uh, the, the function exists for every possible value of x you could think of. That's what the set of real numbers uh, represents. And the range is the same thing. y or f of x, I could have written f of x here instead of y, uh, can be any real number as well. There's no restrictions on what y will be. You'll see that in some of the other examples as well. Uh, to see graphically that the, the range is the entire set of real numbers is the graph goes up forever. It does. There's no highest point it'll, it'll be, and the same thing with here. It goes down forever as well to the left, and so it doesn't matter how big a negative y value you want, you can find it somewhere down there. Now here's another version. I'll give you one extra example of each of these. Let's say f of x is a half x squared plus 3, or y equals a half x, x I said squared. y equals a half x plus 3, or f of x equals a half x plus 3. No square there. Uh, if it was a square, it would actually be a, a parabola like this one over here. And again, the domain of range would be the same for this linear function too, because I can put any number I want in place of x. I can go a half times any number I want and add 3. There's no restriction there. And I can also get any function value I want um, by substituting a number in place in here, and I can find it in place of x. For example, let's say, here's an example here. Let's say I want to find if the number, oh, I don't know what we want here. Let's say, uh, let's say 200. I'll choose a big number in place of x. Uh, I can substitute that in place of the function, and I can solve for x. So I want to solve that. So I would uh, subtract 3 from both sides. So uh, that adds to, to 0. So uh, 200 minus 3 would be 197. So I'd have 197 equals a half x. And then um, I can multiply both sides by 2 to isolate the x. So those 2's divide out. Okay, And 197 uh, times 2, of course, uh, that will uh, be 394. So and my pen changed to so x would be 394. So that just demonstrates that um, y, a y value of 200 does exist, you know, way up here to the uh, right side somewhere to, to find where uh, of 200, and it occurs way out here where x is 394. So the uh, the second one here uh, is uh, it's called a parabola or a quadratic function, and the most basic version is f of x equals x squared or y equals x squared. And uh, the domain is, again, all real numbers. There's no number that I can't square. I can square any number I want. Positive, negative, a decimal, a root, a fraction, doesn't matter. Any real number can be squared. So that's why the domain is all real numbers. Now, the range is all real numbers as well, but there's a restriction on the range. And the restriction is that the y values or function values have to be greater than or equal to 0. This is where the lowest possible y value or function value is. It's 0 there. And if I go along here, well, y is some positive number. Same here, y is some positive number. And so uh, that's the restriction on the range. 
Here's another version of the parabola, a little different. This is in vertex form. So it looks like this. And the domain would be the same for this. It's all real numbers. There's no number I can't put in here in place of x and subtract 3, square it, multiply by negative 2, and add 8. I can do any number I want. But there's only uh, some y values you can have. And the highest y value here is 8 because the vertex is here at 3, 8. And every other, as you go along the graph, every other y value is smaller than that. Oh, I did not mean to do that. So I would write my uh, domain and range for this one like this. And this is a, uh, a common abbreviation. Well, domain, just D for domain. The domain is all real numbers. And the range is all real numbers with the restriction that y is less than or equal to 8. And again, that's because this point right here, the vertex, is at 3, 8. 8 is the highest y value on the entire graph. So here's three more examples on the second page here. Uh, this is called the absolute value function. It's f of x equals the absolute value of x. Absolute value just means the distance to zero. So for example, the absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of 3 is 3. The absolute value of 4 is 4. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2 because it's still 2 units to, to the origin. Uh, distance here being just positive. So the domain here would be all real numbers. There's no, no number I can't take the absolute value of. But there is a restriction in the range. It's, it's the same as the parabola, the original parabola here. It's just all real numbers where y is greater than or equal to 0. 0 is the lowest y value there. And every other y value here is above 0, is above 0 all the way there. Here's another um, absolute value function. And the uh, domain would be the same here. And I'm going to write this one out too. The domain would be the same here, so we would write, uh, let's see, let's do it up here. All real numbers still. And the range is all real numbers. And you see, this y value here is negative 1. So the restriction here would be y is greater than or equal to negative 1. Now, if you happen to have one that, for example, you know, if you had a absolute value that looked like this that opened down, then instead, like if that was the highest point of 4, then the range of that, the restriction would be y is less than or equal to 4. So it depends on whether it opens up or opens down, which way the restriction would go. This is the, uh, it kind of looks like half of a parabola. Uh, it's called the square root function. And the, uh, the lowest value for x is 0. The restriction on it's all real numbers with the restriction x is greater than or equal to 0. I can take the square root of 0, but I cannot take the square root of a negative value. So that's why x is only 0 and positive numbers. And the same is true for the range. Uh, the range is all real numbers greater than or equal to 0 because, see, the lowest value for y is 0 here, and then it becomes positive as we go up through here. Now here's another version of the uh, uh, square root function. And for this one, it actually opens down when you get into the transformations part of the course, you'll, you'll understand more why. That negative here is y. It opens down instead of this one opening upward. And uh, the, let me get my pen going again here. So the uh, domain for this one is it's all real numbers. Now you see the lowest value for x is this 3 right here. And then as you go along the graph here, x can become bigger than 3, but it can't be below 3. So the restriction on this would be x is greater than or equal to 3. And in the equation here, you see I can put 3 in place of x here. And if I do, um, I, I'm taking the square root of 0. That's OK. But I can't, for example, let's get rid of that 3 there. I can't, for example, put uh, 2 in place of x, a number below 3, because 2 minus 3 would be negative 1, and then I'm taking the square root of negative, and I can't do that. And let's erase that again. There we go. Now, the uh, range for this one 
is it's all real numbers. And now, see, I haven't shifted it down at all. The uh, y value there would be 0. And then y becomes, now it's, it's upside down, but the y value starts at the same place as the other one. Uh, so in this case, the restriction on y would be y would be less than or equal to 0. See, for example, you know, y is negative here, y is negative here. Now right there, it's actually but negative 2. Uh, so y can be below 0, but it can't be above 0. So that's the square root function. And this is the, the, uh, uh, the reciprocal function or the rational function. The most basic one is y equals 1 over x or f of x equals 1 over x. And for these, the domain and range are all real numbers with some uh, just unique restrictions. Uh, for example, actually, let me put up what they are. The first one here. The domain is the entire set of real numbers except one value, x can't be 0. And the reason x can't be 0 is because if I put a 0 here in place of x, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. I can put any other non zero number in place of x, 1 divided by 2, 1 divided by 100, 1 divided by negative uh, 150, and I can, define, I can calculate all those, but I can't divide 1 by 0. So that's why the domain is all real numbers except 0. And the range, same idea. Uh, you can't divide 1 by a number, any number, and ever get 0. So that's why y or f of x cannot equal 0. If you look in the graph, you see these are called asymptotes. Um, this is a line that the graph gets closer and closer, but never touches. And same thing here, it's a vertical asymptote, so that's showing that x can't be 0 because it never touches that line. That's the x equals 0 line. This is the y equals 0 line, the x-axis. See, it comes over here and gets close to it, but never touches it. Same idea here, so that's why y can't be 0. Here's another version of that reciprocal function. It looks reciprocal because it's 3 over something, or a, a 3 over an expression with x. And this one's been shifted uh, to the right and down a bit. So similar idea for the domain of range, except there's just different restrictions. So um, the domain would be all real numbers. And you see this number here on this line, that's where x is positive 1. And you see, if you look at this, you see there's the x minus 1. See, if I put a 1 in place of x here, a 1 minus 1 is 0, and divided by 3 by 0, so that's why I can't do that. So the restriction on x is x cannot be 1. And for the range, y is a set of all real numbers for the restriction. So you see, y can't equal what's on this dotted line here. It gets closer to closer to that, but so you're never actually going to touch it. And the same idea out here. And so that's the number negative 2. So y cannot equal negative 2. Actually, if you look at the function here, there's the negative 2. That's actually a, a vertical translation down. It shifted the graph down. So that uh, horizontal asymptote right there is actually at negative 2 instead. So you can look at the graph and see what the restrictions are as well, as well as the equation. So there's some examples of some common functions that you will see uh, in the grade 11 functions course and a lot of other courses in other places too, I assume. Um, and there's some uh, details on what their domains and ranges would be. Again, domain is the, the values that the independent value, often called x are, is, and uh, the range is a set of y values or the dependent variables. And that's the end of the tutorial.